So many new PC builders think you need two or $3,000 to achieve 1440p ultra gaming when a build like this does it for a thousand bucks. This video will have everything you need to copy this maximum FPS per dollar system. We're talking the full part by part breakdown, benchmarking the most recent popular games, and even a cheat sheet to make this as easy as possible. This specific GPU completely changed the meta and the pricing is really good right now, but with the possible incoming tariff changes, who knows how long this will actually last. And real quickly, if you don't already know, my name is Zach and I'm in a unique spot to help you no matter how you wanna start your PC gaming journey. I've built my business to support every avenue, whether you want to copy build guide videos like this, use my free PC building tools on my website, or even just buy a pre-built from us. I'm not here to push you one way or another, just showing you some really solid options. And this one is definitely one to consider. So let's get into it. All right, so there's actually two new meta parts in here. And the first one is the CPU, the Ryzen 5 9600X. This is AMD's ultimate mid-range CPU, but honestly, that label is kind of fake news in my opinion. The 9600X is certainly mid-range price coming in at just under $200, but at the same time, it can pair with literally any GPU on the market and not hold it back, including a 5090. If you don't wanna spend hundreds of dollars more for an X3D chip or a Ryzen 7 with more cores and threads, then this is as good as it gets for a pure gaming CPU. It actually went on sale during Amazon Prime Day several weeks ago to like $150, but it's been consistently holding strong between $190 to $200. I'll have a link to where you can pick one up along with everything else I'm talking about today down in the description. What's also down in the description is our sponsor, Arctic, and specifically their brand new extender lineup of cases. The entire community has praised Arctic for their top of the line cooling products and accessories. Well, now they're bringing that same high level to cases, finally. The extender VG is a panoramic style EATX tower with not just super clean aesthetics, but also an optimized airflow oriented layout as you'd expect. The VG model includes a vertical GPU mount if that's your style. It comes pre-installed with five total ARGB fans. And remember that these are high-end P Pro series Arctic fans, not just super cheap knockoffs. There's also a ton of room in here, including space for a 420 millimeter AIO up at the top, which is what we fully took advantage of. There's also several models to choose from depending on your preference and budget. I'll have a link to where you can check these out for yourself down in the description and big thanks to Arctic for sponsoring today's video. All right, moving down our parts list. Next up, we have the motherboard and this is a perfect pick for a pure performance build. It's the MSI Pro B650-S Wi-Fi and I snagged this off B&H for $136 brand new. If you didn't already know, B&H is actually a really good spot for certain PC parts and they have really fast and free shipping. Now, they don't have a huge catalog because it's mostly a photography gear store, but I've been buying there almost just as much as Amazon and Newegg for my PC parts. This MSI Pro has been a staple both for my YouTube build videos like this, but also our pre-builds that we sell on zttbuilds.com. It's simply just a very affordable, but still reliable B650 ATX size motherboard with built-in Wi-Fi. If you don't see this one in stock, I'll have a few alternatives linked in the cheat sheet. That cheat sheet, which is linked down below, has an alternative parts section, just in case you can't find something in stock. And if it's on that list, that means you can use it without any sort of disclaimer for just an easy swap. Next up is the RAM. And this is the G-Skill Flare X 32 gigabyte DDR5 kit clocked at 6, thousand megahertz with a CL rating of 30. Remember that for a build like this, that's exactly what search filter you should be using, but feel free to go with a different set if you find a better deal. The next part getting installed during this motherboard prep is the SSD, and this is a one terabyte silicon power UD90 that I grabbed for $57 brand new off Amazon. For a pure performance, every last FPS per dollar kind of build, this is exactly what I recommend doing, which is essentially just grabbing the cheapest Gen 4 drive available. That'll allow us to save money for the more performance impacting components. Now, don't get me wrong. If you wanna buy a better or faster drive, you absolutely should do that. But for gaming, this SSD is perfectly fine. It's not as fast as some of the more popular Samsung or Crucial drives, but Silicon Power is still a very reliable brand and any Gen 4 speed is still super fast these days. In my opinion, most normal PC gamers won't even tell a difference in their Gen 4 SSD speeds unless they're doing some type of productivity or creativity work outside of just gaming. This is still blazing fast. And finally, to polish off this 
Mobo Prep. We gotta cool the CPU, and this is the ID Cooling Frozen A410. I've used this so many times before, especially in these all black style of pure performance builds. I mean, aesthetically, it's still pretty clean with this modern look, but more importantly is that it'll keep the 9600X perfectly cool and do it for less than $30. Just as a note though, the 9600X is in fact extremely easy to keep cool because it is so efficient. Once we wrap up this parts list, I'll explain that there's one other cooler alternative that I consider if you're copying this build part by part. Before that though, let's move on to the power supply and here's the MSI Mag A550BM. For the one millionth time, if you've been watching my recent videos, this is a solid and reliable tier C rated non-modular unit and you can confirm that yourself by using the new and improved PSU tier list. This is hosted on zttbuildhub.com and it's a very organized tier system from PSU reviewers that are way smarter than I am. I just convinced them to host it on my website so it's next to all of my other tools. The PSU tier list will show you the reasons why each power supply got rated the way it did and for $1,000 builds or less, I personally will use tier A, B, or C. Some people will argue that you should use a tier B here and that's fine if you want to, but that'll most likely set your build just slightly over $1,000. Now, most people don't have an arbitrary, super strict $1,000 budget, so if you're willing to go just a bit above that, this is probably where I recommend spending that extra money first. You can upgrade to a tier B model for about $20 more, and that'll give you an even better and more reliable unit, but that's certainly not mandatory as this one still gets the job done. What also gets the job done is this case, and before using it, that wasn't a guarantee as this is a very cheap DIY PC DIY G18WD that only costs $57. That's an incredibly low price for an ATX case these days. This is using very cheap material as DIY PC often does, but I mean, when we're trying to get the most FPS per dollar, we gotta make some sacrifices somewhere. By not spending $100 or even more on the case, this allows us to spend more on the GPU, which we'll talk about here soon. And honestly, the aesthetics of this aren't all that bad. I'm actually kind of digging this wood grain front panel look. It has very similar vibes to the Okonos wood grain case, but for $57, there's not much to complain about. I actually have a full step-by-step -step cable management guide for this case in the cheat sheet with a bunch of screenshots, but the only other part to throw inside of here is the GPU, so let's move on to that. Again, this is the absolute meta right now for mid-range builds, especially at that $950 to $1,200 mark. It's the RX 9060 XT, specifically the 16 gig version. This one specifically is the Asus Prime model that I grabbed for $370, but the exact model you buy really doesn't matter all that much. I would buy whichever aesthetic design you like or from a brand that you trust the most. They'll all give you relatively the same performance and cooling power. The reason why any of these are the meta now though is because because for $360 to $370, you're getting a true 1440p high to ultra level of GPU and 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is plenty and probably plenty for several more years. Compared to Nvidia, they aren't even offering a card at this price range. Well, unless you count the eight gigabyte RTX 5060 Ti, which honestly shouldn't even be a comparison against this XT in my opinion. The 9060 XT delivers more performance outside of ray tracing and double the amount of VRAM. And at this price, it's even ruined the used meta with GPUs like the 6700 XT XT and even the 7700 XT. Let's check out how it runs in an updated benchmarking run after finalizing this parts list. As you can see, the total for this price to performance rig came out just a bit over that $1,000 mark. But honestly, if you're searching for these parts right now, they very well might be under that target mark. Both the CPU and GPU have been fluctuating in price just a bit, usually lower than what I just paid for it. And if you wanna definitely get under $1,000, I recommend swapping out the cooler to the ID Cooling SE214 XT Black, which will save you about $10 and basically guarantee the sub $1,000 total build cost. And if you wanna see the step-by-step -step process of how I built this PC, we extracted all of the building steps from the Twitch livestream when I assembled it, so it skips all the beer drinking and yapping. This video is over on the ZTT Extras channel and also linked down description. But now let's jump into some benchmarks and first we'll start with Fortnite and in 1440p Pro settings this PC absolutely crushes it with 294 FPS. Here's Cyberpunk and our first glimpse of true 1440p Ultra without any sort of upscaling and this $1,000 build cranked out a very solid FPS average of 73. In Marvel Rivals we dropped the settings just a bit down to 1440p high but still got a solid 88 FPS. In the finals we also ran it at 1440p high and got 168 FPS and I'm not sure if anyone's still playing it 
But here's Splitgate 2, and in 1440p high, it got 174 FPS. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and as you can see, pretty much every game is either at the 1440p high or ultra settings. Some of the games like Black Ops 6, I'd probably recommend playing in medium just to get that FPS number up a bit. But if you wanna see the full benchmarking run of every game with longer gameplay clips, we just uploaded a dedicated benchmarking video for this build over on the ZTT Extras channel. We actually have a ton of other extra style of content over there, and we've been uploading a short form video every single day. So feel free to click the subscribe button so we can reach our goal of hitting 100,000 subs. Now, I do wanna take a very quick look about the cooling situation for the 9600X and the 9060XT inside this super cheap case. So here's Assassin's Creed Shadows, which blasts the GPU to 100% load the entire time, and that 9060XT is staying under 55 degrees, which is absolutely unreal. We didn't test a pure CPU demanding game, but here's Fortnite again, where the CPU load is actually up there around the 70% mark, and that 9600X is staying at or just under 70 degrees, which is what we wanna see. Overall, it's honestly gonna be pretty tough to beat this $1,000 build if your goal is absolute maximum FPS for your dollar. But one way you can do that is if you consider used components, and the video about how to do that is up here on the screen right now.